Hey guys, Rylan Russell here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanna test and see if the DJI RS2's Raveneye system can successfully automatically track and follow a pastor as he's walking back and forth on stage. So let's give it a try. So I've used a lot of gimbals over the years and many of them DJI stuff and I've implemented and utilized the active track in things like the Osmo Pocket. It does a pretty decent job actively tracking with this little gimbal. Um, I have the DJI Ronin SC. Its active track is not as useful because you have to put a phone on top of it and the focal length is different that it's tracking at. We also use a Moza Air gimbal with a Lumix G7 every week on our cable cam. And uh, we don't use active track, but we do track with a joystick of a remote control on that. I use my Mavic Pro all the time with active track. So I'm really used to using active track. And when I saw Peter McKinnon's video of him running through the woods like this, holding this gimbal, tracking someone running through the woods and he's not even looking at them, I thought, surely this thing can track my pastor walking back and forth on a stage, right? So I got one in and I'm gonna do some testing on it. We're gonna start with some easier tests first, some wider focal lengths, and then I really wanna throw on my big daddy, the Canon 70-200 2.8 that we run our follow cam on every Sunday. It's got the GH4 with the Metabone Speed Booster and we're running this tight uh, head to toe follow cam shot. And I'm curious, can this Ronin active track with Rave and I, our pastor? If I go up here and we just use our virtual joysticks to adjust our framing, let's pretend I am the pastor. And if we go into active track, make sure it's set on landscape. And let's drag a box around me set that speed to let's try 14 and I'm just gonna walk so I'm preaching talking to people over here hey guys it's a really important point that I'm about to tell you and everybody in the congregation needs to know this and now I'm thinking about coming over here to this side and as you can see it's just got that green box around me it's tracking me Seems like a pretty good speed. You can adjust that active track speed to fit whatever focal length you're using. So it's keeping me pretty well. We're at uh, 18, so that would be 36, 35 millimeters. Of course, it's got the Metabones on there as well. So I'm just walking, preaching, talking. Let's see if I go down here on these steps. Will it go down with me? Now, I don't have autofocus enabled right now on the GH4 because GH4s have really bad autofocus. <laughs> so I'm probably a little out of focus now. But you can see that it's working really well. So even with the black shirt in the black background, no problems tracking. This is a busier background. I'm pretty far from the camera. I wonder, will it track me if I go down here out in the audience? I'm not sure the 360 abilities. I think it can spin 360 degrees. Okay, I'm going behind the camera. It lost me for a second, but it picked me back up. I don't know. Can this thing go all the way around? <laughs> going back up. I mean, this is pretty impressive. It's pretty smooth. Keeping me mostly centered. How's it Okay, I'm here at the center again. I don't know, guys. What do you think? I mean, it's not half bad. Let's get a little bit tighter and see how it works. All right, I would never frame a shot like this, cut off at the knees, but let's just see how it tracks here. Speed 14 still. We're a little bit tighter shot. Talking, talking, talking. It's doing a pretty good tra job tracking. Now, a lot of times our pastor will go over here, he'll fake people out, and then he'll come back this way. Oh, stay with me. Of course, you can always increase the active track speed, 
but you don't want to do that on the fly. So you kind of want to find that sweet spot for your pastor. If he's a fast walker, maybe 14 is good. They recommend 20 for a 24 mil equivalent lens. Um, and it will go up and down a little bit too. The only thing that I don't like is that you cannot use the joysticks while active tracking to reframe the subject. So it, it's gonna just kind of do its thing and try to keep you centered by the way that you had the framing initially. But I mean, it's working pretty well so far. All right, so let me know in the comments, what did you think about that first test? Do you think that's a usable kind of tracking for your church setting? Uh, that's not how we use our follow cam week in and week out though. So now I really wanna do this test to see can it track on a really tight, high focal length? We're, we're running this usually around 175 millimeters, but you have to double that because it's on a micro four thirds sensor. So um, that'll be very fine tracking with the motors if it can do that. So let's fire this all up and let me know what you guys think. Okay. We're going to go in and use our virtual joystick real quick just to adjust this. It rolls a little bit off. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we'll make sure our active track is set to landscape, which it is. It won't work if it's in portrait. <laughs> and let's draw a box and just see what happens here. So we'll draw a box around me. Active track set, active track speed is set to four. They say 20 is optimal, but the higher that you go in a focal length, the slower you want to set that. So we're going to try it at four and just see how it works. So I'm a pastor, I'm preaching, I'm talking, and I'm talking to this side of the room now. Hey guys, I'm making a really important point and you got to pay attention to this. But now I'm thinking that I might need to come over here and talk to these people. So. You know, our camera guy sometimes might not be paying attention and may not keep them in the shot. Is this a viable option? Now I'm talking to this side of the room, but you know, now I'm thinking I might come back over to my little pulpit here and let's see how it settles. Okay, it's not bringing me back to the center for some reason. I thought that active track always keeps you in the center. So let's just see if it can go over to here. It's tracking me fine. It's actually pretty smooth. What do you guys think? Oh, okay, I changed directions real quickly like a pastor likes to do. I'm talking, I'm doing some things. I'm really getting into it. And it's still only set on active track speed four, which you think wouldn't be able to keep up with me. And now I'm talking right here. I don't know, what do you guys think? Now let's go waist up and let's get real crazy with it and see if it can track me that way. All right, guys, so now we're on a waist up shot and this is a really tight focal length. I assume this will be pretty tough for this to successfully work. We're at about 70 feet, maybe 65 from the camera to me. And so let's draw another box and see if it grabs me. All right, I'm still on active track four. I'm gonna go a little bit slower this time and just see if it can handle tracking, okay? I'm stopping right here, a uh, little jerky. It can't decide what it wants to do. I mean, it's really having to do fine adjustments, but it is kind of, oh, we got some wiggle and I'm gonna have to recenter it. <laughs> yeah, it didn't like, it doesn't like being this close, I don't think. Um, Let's try one more time and we'll slow down the active track even more all the way down to what it, the slowest speed it can do. All right, so we'll go all the way down to one. Let's see if this makes it any better. Okay. It, okay, not bad. It's not keeping up with me though, just barely pacing. Um, what happens if we go to two? Go to two. All 
All right, I'm talking, I'm talking, reading some scripture, and now I'm gonna go back to the center. It is tracking, it's just not staying up with me at two, and I felt like when I went to four, this is when it struggles, stopping. So let's go to three. Okay, it's still tracking. I feel like it's kind of like incrementally moving now. All right, so there's a, a good test with a really tight focal length. You can see it's, it's probably not what you would want to try to utilize this tool for. Um, on a really tight waist up follow cam shot, it just can't do it as smoothly as an actual operator could. All right guys, so you could see that the tight, tight focal length didn't really work as well as we wanted, but I want to show you one other creative way that you might think about utilizing ActiveTrack during your live streams. And that would be using your gimbal, but active tracking a focal subject while moving throughout the sanctuary in the crowd. So here's an example of what that would look like. Okay, so we're gonna try just active tracking a singer. So I'm gonna get it in the center of the frame and click this trigger button one time. It puts a green box on my subject. Now anywhere I walk, it should keep that subject I'm not moving the gimbal, the gimbal's moving itself. It still appears to be tracking. I don't have autofocus on, so I am not moving the gimbal. The gimbal is moving itself. So I'm looking to make sure I'm not walking into people and the gimbal's doing the work. It's actually working really well. It's interesting. I am not worried about where it's aimed right now. Pretty cool stuff, right? One other thing I could see us using this specific gimbal for is that you can actually use your phone to control what the gimbal is doing. It's called Force Mobile. So if I turn that on, we can actually use my phone to move the gimbal. So wherever I move my phone, it's actually moving the camera. The reason we would use this is, say you have a camera up on a jib or something, this may be easier than a remote would be. You could just have someone down on the ground with using a, f a phone and a type of holder or something like that. And the visual part of it, it's kind of like this VR experience or something. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of a cool extra feature. So there's my tests. I don't know that we would actually ever use this in a, a tight follow cam scenario like we have, but if you have a shorter stage to camera area, I could see using this on a wider focal length, you know, something between a 24 to 70 full frame and it actually being somewhat dependable. Uh, you got to have other cameras as well, but if you need that extra automation, it might be worth a try. And also, this gimbal offers a lot of other features that I'm kind of considering, you know, just replacing my, my Ronin SC here with it, even though, you know, it's a lot more expensive, but um, it's kind of future-proof, and we can put bigger lenses on it and that kind of thing. You can do up to 10 pounds. So, uh, what do you guys think? Is this just asking for trouble, <laughs> or would you use this? If you are interested in buying one of these, uh, I'm gonna link all the different gimbals that we use here at our church in the description, and they're kind of at different price points if you're looking to get into the gimbal market, and so maybe that'll help you guys out. Remember, we can do a lot of great things. Let's do it all for the right reasons. If you wanna check out one of my other videos of just stuff that happens here at the church, maybe our $20,000 that we use to set up an eight camera, multi-cam live streaming setup that, in my opinion, looks really good. Check out that video right there. We'll see you in the next one.